moment that this overqualified African-American mixed race woman. First of all, we've been friends for a long time, and I feel like you just captured what a lot of people are feeling. So Thank let me no. just say that. No. But I Clinton Jaws, the only thing I care about is your subscription. Please subscribe. Because I'm psychotic, I watched the entire MSNBC live coverage of the election. It was something like 12 hours. And guess what? You can't find it anymore. They deleted it. They deleted it on their website, and they deleted it on YouTube. Why would they do that? I think one reason, because at the very end, around 4.35 in the morning, there's a meltdown that I'm going to show you that nobody has seen. You haven't seen it. I don't even, I don't even think it's on YouTube. But it also might have something to do when they announced Trump president. Because the announcement was pre-recorded. <laughs> it's just a hunch. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm just going to, I'm going to show you something. Tell me I'm wrong. And who cares if it is, right? Well, I, I kind of do. You don't get any more fake and phony trying to fake a live event if in fact they did this. I could only find one clip with Jen announcing that Trump is president. And this is how it ended. Out there, forces for good in this country and that they are going to be getting to work. Glad you're not my mom. That's how I thought she ended the speech, but they cut out one sentence that I found. By the way, you can literally not find where Jen announces Trump president anywhere. I even went to MSNBC website and they have a highlight reel. It's called MSNBC highlights of election day and night. And they didn't bother to add the top one highlight when Trump, when they announced Trump president, they left that highlight out. Here's the footage of Jen announcing. I'm not going to play the whole thing. She announces Trump president. I just want you to watch the end of it. The very end. It's 4.35 in the morning. They spent the entire night avoiding to call Trump president. And then all of a sudden it's so important. She has to interrupt Boardman in a dramatic fashion. Still a long way for her to go, Kornacki, but they I just put... have to jump. I, yep. Steve Kornacki, I just have to jump in. And we, you've been predicting breaking. this. We've been waiting for breaking. it. And we do have some breaking news from the decision desk. NBC News can now project that Donald Trump has... It was so important at that moment that she had to dramatically interrupt him. It's ridiculous. This, this, this news outlet is ridiculous. They need to go extinct. Now, I'm only going to show you a minute, but she speaks for like three. And they don't show her face. There's a reason why they don't show her face, because she's reading from a script. And it's possibly pre-recorded. I wish I had better news for my daughter later this morning. I, mean, I know Tim Miller and I were talking about this earlier, when she and so many others wake up to this news. I, I wish I could have called her and told her that the first woman president had just been elected. Her daughter's nine. She doesn't care. She just wants to go on her scooter. Nine. What nine-year-old cares who the president is? It's Christmas and tooth fairies, that's it. I wish that, I won't be able to do that. But what I can do, what I can tell my daughter and what I will tell my daughter is that our roles as American citizens have never been more important than they are right now. That's what you're gonna tell I her? I can tell her that there are still lots of good forces out there, forces for good in Why, this country. Why mom, is everything and evil And that they there? are going to be getting to work. We have to sneak in a quick break. We, okay, I'm gonna come back to the table right now. What was that? She's on the verge of a panic attack. Listen to her voice. We have to sneak in a quick break. We okay, I'm going to come back to the table right now. Quick break. And what happened to that quick break? Work. We have to sneak in a quick break. We okay, I'm going to come back to the table right now. I, this is a lot to I don't know. I'm suspicious. I'm suspicious that they pre-recorded and threw it in there. And all of a sudden they're back. She's back at the desk. A fart in the wind. We have to sneak in a okay, quick see ya. break. We okay, I'm oh, going to come back oh, oh. to the table right now. I, this is a lot to digest. We okay, I've spent way too much time on that. Let's get down to the meltdown. All night they blamed everybody. Poor people for not voting. <laughs> White girls who aren't educated, who, who don't have a college degree. Don't most, most white women not have a college degree? But no, they're to blame. Latinos, I think, at one point. And now, guess what? Guess what they're going to blame this on now? That's right. Systemic rackism. I don't know. I think his name is Anthony Coley. Think about this moment we are of in, course, though. Of course, I just had to ask you that right. because I think that's people are going right. to that's going to come quick right. to people's digestion of, of the news. So you said morning. it best. We are at a moment where we're going to be digesting this for a while. 
the uh, headwinds she faced Good digestion. Real. Right. When I think about the right track, wrong track numbers, she couldn't overcome that. When I think about the economic anxiety um, that people around the country feel, she couldn't overcome that. But I also have a question about the role that race and gender mm -hmm. played in these results. Here are the facts. If we would pull back the layers, she is a person of color. She is a she and she is in an interracial marriage. And I wonder, I have this question mark in What's my that? mind over whether all of those things combined was too much for pockets of this country. Can't she just and suck? And it, it, it is a stunning, this says more about who we are as a country in this moment that this overqualified African-American mixed race woman did not win this race, and she lost it to a man who was a felon, who tried to overturn um, the will of voters in a free or fair election. Um, you talked about the House. Um, I think that is gonna be the next line of defense. Yeah. Hopefully, I'm not confident though. I suspect and I hope that Hakeem Jeffries is elected by his peers to be the leader of Democrats, but they're gonna have a conversation about this now, right? Um, because he's a Democrat from New York. And this is what you were talking about in, a, in an earlier segment. Who is gonna be the face of the resistance? I think it should still be Hakeem Jeffries. He's, and he's got the support from the largest caucus within the Democratic caucus, the Black caucus, and the New York delegation. But Democrats are going to have a real conversation about who should be the face of the resistance over the next four years. First of all, we've been friends for a long time, and I feel like you just captured what a lot of people are feeling. So let me just say that. No. But I, I do think one thing I, I would disagree with you on, I didn't mean to sugarcoat that. I, yeah. did, I was very touched by what you said. Is I, Hakeem Jeffries, I think, will. That's the reason, guys. America, it's because of, the, it's because of your rackism. That, that's what it is. And, but Harris was overqualified. She's a woman. She's in an interrace relationship. A person of color. And you didn't vote for her? It had nothing to do with her intelligence. Nobody thought she was an idiot. Now, it was because of the color of her skin. Didn't we? Wasn't somebody named Obama president not that long ago? But they want you to think it's because of her race and her gender. Not that Trump is the best candidate. Anyways, I caught that. It grossed me out. When are these guys going to be off the air? What's that?